Good morning, Grade 7, and welcome to Worksheet Cloud, Grade 7 Natural Sciences. If you have a question during the lesson, send an email with your question to grade 7 at worksheetcloud.com. My name is Mrs. Hall, and today I'm going to be teaching you about classifying animals. We are going to be looking at a little bit more in-depth detail of vertebrates and invertebrates. What do you hope to learn from this lesson today, grade sevens? Well, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to classify animals into vertebrates and invertebrates, as well as know and understand the basic characteristics of the two groups. So, just a little bit of a recap from last week. Why do we classify organisms? As you know, there are millions of species on our planet. It would be difficult if we just tried to describe and name each one individually. Although species can be very different from each other, many of them have similar features that allow us to put them into groups. Putting different species into different groups according to their features is called classification. Take a look at these pictures over here. Right? How would you group these pictures? So you've got birds, you've got plants, you've got animals, you've got grasses. How would you group these and classify these pictures? I'll give you a few seconds. Think about it. Right. One way that a scientist might have grouped them is to put them into the following four groups. Plants birds, mammals, and reptiles. Now, you may have heard some of these words before. They come from a scientific way of classifying organisms. Scientists across the world all use and recognize the same classification system. In this classification system, they start off using very big groups that include a lot of animals and then move down to smaller groups that do not include as many animals. The biggest groups are called the kingdoms and all living things are classified into five different kingdoms. Carrying on from our lesson last week, can you remember what those five kingdoms are? Come on grade sevens, put on those thinking caps, you've got this. Right, over here we have animals, plants, Monera, which were our bacteria and primitive algae, our protists, which were our single-celled organisms, which we spoke about and delved into a little bit, and then we had our fungi, our molds, our mushrooms, and toadstools. In grade 7, we look in detail at the animal and the plant kingdom. So, today we are going to start off grade 7s with animals. And... We know that they are divided up into vertebrates. These are animals that have a backbone. This shouldn't be a new word to you. They have a firmer body because of the muscles that connect to their skeleton. And there you have it, the backbone. We then have the invertebrates. Now these animals do not have a backbone. You just move me out the way there. They have soft inner bodies which are held in shape by a flexible covering of outer cells, which we will learn about, or by a hard covering called an exoskeleton, which is also not new to you, grade sevens. You would have learned about it in grade five. The first group of animals we are going to take a good look at is the vertebrates. Now, these animals that have a backbone with a hollow tube inside, it's there to hold the nerves, and it is, they are called vertebrates. As we can see in the x-ray image of the dog, we can see the skeleton of this vertebrate. This is made of bone, and we say that vertebrates have an endoskeleton. The first group of animals that we're going to look at that are classified as vertebrates are mammals. They have nostrils, 
that lead to lungs for breathing. They also have body hair or fur. They have mammary glands that produce milk. They are warm-blooded. They have internal fertilization and they give birth to live young. So there is some form of parental care. Now, most of these words you should already know, but there are a couple of instances, grade uh, sevens, where I will put up little keynotes for you. So internal fertilization is uh, means that the male deposits sperm inside the female's body. The rest of these terms you should already know. Like warm-blooded, think about it. Can you remember what it means? Our second group of vertebrates that we're looking at are fish. Now, as you know, fish live in water. They breathe with gills. They have streamlined bodies. They have cartilage or bony skeletons. They are cold-blooded. They mostly lay eggs and they have external fertilization. Now, external fertilization means that the egg and the sperm are released into the water where they fuse together. When we classify fish, we also look closely at the material that makes up the skeleton of the fish. This leads us to divide fish into two main groups, cartilaginous fish, which have skeletons made of cartilage, and bony fish. The, uh, these fish have skeletons made of bone. Some interesting facts. Sharks, skates and rays are part of a group of cartilaginous fish because their skeletons are made of cartilage. These fish breathe, breathe using five to seven pairs of gills. Two thirds of the shark's brain is dedicated to its sense of smell. A shark's sense of smell is so well developed that it can tell the direction from which the smell is coming. That's maybe why they follow the blood so quickly. A whale shark is a shark and not a whale. It is the world's largest fish and it only eats plankton. There you have it. Beautiful looking specimen. Here's a little bit of a challenge for you. Is a seahorse a fish? Think about that one, grade seven. Seahorses are fish. They live in water, they breathe through gills, and they have a swim bladder. The male seahorse actually becomes pregnant. The female squirts her eggs into the male's pouch, and he then fertilizes them and incubates them until they are ready to hatch. There you have it. Who would have known? Let's take a look at our next group of vertebrates. We are now going to look at reptiles. Reptiles have dry, scaly skins, internal fertilization, they are egg-laying, they breathe with lungs, and they are cold-blooded. Our next group that we are going to look at are amphibians. Now, amphibians have a moist skin, they lay their eggs in water, so they have external fertilization, the larvae have gills and live in water. The adults have lungs and live on land. They are cold-blooded, or another term is ectothermic. And what does that mean? They get heat from the environment and therefore need to live in areas where it is warm enough for them to have enough body heat to survive. If it gets very cold, an amphibian will need to either find a space under a log or leaves, or perhaps go and sit in the warm sun. Amphibians are animals that include salamanders, newts, Sicilians, frogs, and toads. There we have our frog, which I'm sure you all recognize, our lovely toad. There's a salamander, and there's an example of a newt. Now, salamanders can regenerate, that means they can regrow their limbs and tail within a few weeks if they were lost due to predator attacks. And often you see them missing a tail or a little leg. And guess what? They just grow back. Now, look at the following image of a Sicilian. The Sicilian is actually an amphibian. 
Now, what are the characteristics to be classified as an amphibian? Okay, so take a good look at it. Not a very pretty looking um, amphibian, is it? Now, in order not to be an invertebrate, in other words, an animal without a backbone, like a worm, the animal needs to have a backbone. Now, the Sicilian does have a backbone and it has a skull. The Sicilian is not a snake. It is not a reptile. And it has a larval stage, which is born in water, and it undergoes metamorphosis to become the adult Sicilian. The larvae also have gills to breathe underwater. Sicilians also do not have scales like reptiles. Interesting fact that. Amphibians also lay their eggs in water, like this frog. And why do you think they need to do this, grade 7? The eggs are in water so that when the larvae hatch, they are already in the water to swim around. The eggs would dry out if they were not in the water. The fertilization process in amphibians often requires water as the female will lay the eggs and as she do does so, the male deposits his sperm in the water around them, so they are then fertilized. Interesting fact. You can tell the difference between frog eggs and toad eggs because frogs lay their eggs in clumps and toads lay their eggs in strings. It's never too late to learn something new. Our next group of vertebrates are birds, and as you know, they have feathers and wings. They lay eggs with hard shells. They have internal fertilization. They breathe with lungs. They are warm-blooded, and they have parental care. What do you think South Africa's national bird is? Just put this in. Just wanted to see how many of you actually know by grade seven. And I hope you're all thinking what I'm going to show you right now. Yes, grade seven, the blue crane. What a magnificent national bird we do have. Our next group that we are looking at are the invertebrates. Now, these animals do not have a backbone, as I said previously. They have soft inner bodies, which are held in shape by a flexible covering of outer cells or by a harder covering called an exoskeleton. Now why can we not see their bones? This is because invertebrates do not have a skeleton made of bones. The crab has a hard shell covering on the outside of its body. This supports their soft bodies inside. We say they have an exoskeleton but not all invertebrates have an exoskeleton. For example, let's take a look at the cynodarians, for example, the jellyfish. They are hollow bodied. The mouth is the only body opening and is surrounded by tentacles. And they use sting cells to paralyze their prey. They are invertebrates. However, they have a hydrostatic skeleton. This is a skeletal support provided by hydrostatic pressure from a fluid-filled cavity surrounded by muscles. Hydrostatic pressure provides skeletal support in sea anemones, jellyfish, nem nematodes, annelids, and echinoderms, as well as many other groups. Our flatworms, grade sevens, have flat, thin bodies, as you can see in the diagram, their digestive system has only one opening. The animals are both male and female, and they are mostly parasites. Our true worms, on the other hand, are rounded bodied, and their bodies are made of segments, which you can see quite clearly over here. Our mollusks, they are not segmented. Their body is in three continuous parts with head, body, and foot, and they have one or two shells. Our echinoderms are spiny skinned, their body is in five parts, and they have a central mouth with gills. And then grade sevens, we look at arthropods in a lot of detail in the curriculum for grade seven.
They have a hard exoskeleton on the outside of the body. They have eyes and a mouth and their body is divided into more than one segment. They can have a head, body and a, a, a thorax. Sometimes their head and thorax are joined to form the cephalothorax and then the abdomen. So we take an in-depth look at crustaceans, which are crabs and things like that. Arachnids are spiders. You've all heard of arachnophobia, the fear of spiders. Insects, and then we look at centipedes and millipedes in grade seven. So there you have it, grade sevens. We have our vertebrates and our invertebrates. Very brief details today. We looked at mammals, we looked at fish, we looked at reptiles, amphibians, and birds. And you should now be able to know a few basic characteristics about them. We looked at cnidarians, <laughs> flatworms, true worms, mollusks, echinoderms, as well as arthropods. Right, a little bit of a quiz. Just by looking at these words, which is the odd one out? Right, I'm going to give you a second then. Take a good look. The odd one out. Who can see it straight away? Well done. It is the whale. All of the rest are fish, but the whale is a mammal. Look at this, which is the odd one out here. Take a quick, brief view through all of them. You should be able to recognize that the platypus is the odd one out. All of the rest are birds, whereas a platypus is a mammal, which is the odd one out here. Skim through those words, grade seven. Right? Which one is it? Correct, the scorpion. All the rest are insects, whereas a scorpion is an arachnid. And you will learn about this in a lot more detail as we follow through with the curriculum. Now, which group do I belong to? I live mainly in water. I feed my young on milk. I am covered in brown fur. My body temperature is around 30 degrees Celsius. I have a beak that I search for, for food with on the river bottom. The male of my species have a venomous spike on their hind legs. Any idea what I am? I am a mammal. But which mammal am I? Grade sevens, who knows? Correct, the duck-billed platypus. Which group do I belong to? I have green and brown moist skin. I can run on water. I lay about 20 jelly covered eggs at a time in water. I am cold blooded. I feed on both flowers and small animals. I live in trees and on riverbanks. What group do I belong to? I am an amphibian. And which amphibian is this? Does anyone have any idea? The basilisk, the basilisk lizard. Okay, interesting little fellow that. Go and do some research on him. Which group do I belong to? I live in water and breathe through lungs. My skin is covered in pale brown dry scale. I lay tough leathery eggs on land. I am cold blooded. I feed on invertebrates like crabs and clams. What group do I belong to? Have you got this yet? I can live for over 39 years. Correct. I am a reptile and I am the loggerhead turtle. Right. Last one. I live in caves and dark places. I have a wingspan of 18 centimeters and I can fly. I give birth to live young and I feed them on milk. I weigh 57 grams and my body is covered in brown fur. As an adult, I only feed on blood. I live up to nine years. Any idea yet? Which group do I belong to? I am a mammal, but which mammal is this grade seven? Come on, you guys should know. 
a vampire bat. Well done to those who got it. Oh, there's one more. Sorry about that. I am covered in brown feathers. I can run around at about 50 kilometers an hour. I lay eggs with hard shells. I eat stones that help me to digest my food. That should give you a clue. I eat plants and small insects. I live up to 30 years. I am a bird, but which bird am I? The one clue, I eat stones that help me to digest my food. That should have given it away. It's an emu. Right. Some interesting animals. Look at these gorgeous, gorgeous, <laughs> gorgeous animals, grade seven. We have some vertebrates. We have some invertebrates. Amazing, amazing animals. The diversity of animals as we know them. There is just so much to learn and we learn new things every day. So to end off, just a little joke. They told me I could be anything. So I became a frog. <laughs> if only grade seven. So grade sevens, as I end off this lesson, I want to say thank you for watching. And please don't forget that this lesson was brought to you by Worksheet Cloud. You can download the homework sheet and the memo. And I hope you walk away from this lesson today going, wow, I didn't know that. That was something new I learned today. Interesting stuff. Go and tell a friend. Share your education with your friends and your family. Take care, grade seven. Hope you have a good day.